toast today, Korea. It's a perfect combination, boy. Yeah, uh, legends in the South. This is sports fans' only home for the hottest sports show around. These guys are on fire. You're now listening to KJ and Sean Mack. Welcome back to Sports Fans Only. I'm your host, KJ, a.k.a. The Sports Guru, back with another episode, or shall I say the first episode of NFL Blitz. So let me give you a little quick context to why I say that. Before we start our YouTube channel, we had a sports podcast for about a year and a half, which we're actually thinking about starting back up. And during that span, I had NFL Blitz, which was a segment I did. So that's why I said another episode. As a matter of fact, if you want to go to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Anchor.com, uh, type in Sports Fans Only Podcast, and here's some of our early stuff, which was modeled after a morning sports show. Uh, we would have 30-minute segments, talk about all the hot topics and stuff like that. We would play games. Um, in between, we had 12 minutes of music, come back, do the weather, Sean Max, uh, This Day in Sports. That's actually where that originated from. And then we brought it over to the YouTube channel. Uh, sometimes we would have guests. And, yeah, I really enjoyed it um, until the record labels uh, started coming at us for playing their music. So just a long, long story. Uh, before we get into the Patriots versus the Jets game, uh, do you see the freshness that is coming across the screen right now? I know you see it. Zoom in if you have to. Turn your phone sideways if you haven't already. Uh, take a look at some of that dope stuff. It's good quality material. Uh, designs are off the hook. So uh, if you want to go to sportsfansonly.store, that's sportsfansonly.store, the sports fans only all one word, uh, to get your latest in sports apparel. As you can see from the pictures on the screen, we are not playing. We're doing the uh, Jay-Z takeover uh, in many different industries. At least that's what we're trying to do. And uh, I'm being dead serious, so you'll see. Anyway, go check that out. And uh, now, why we are here, we are here to discuss the Patriots versus the Jets, more specifically Mac Jones versus Zach Wilson. We all know the hype coming into this game, but I want to focus on the positives and the negatives of the Wilson-Jones effect. That's kind of what I call it. So what we're going to do, we're going to get into all the positives and negatives from both sides, uh, the Patriots and the Jets, and we're just going to go right down the line with all the positives, and we're going to follow that up with the negatives, and then we're going to get out of here. We're going to make this real quick, about a 12-minute video, and then uh, we're going to keep it pushing. So anyway, um, what went right for both teams? So we're going to start off with the Patriots. Um, they're secondary. Had a crazy amount of interceptions, had four interceptions, three in the first half, one in the second half, and let's just plainly put it, uh, Zach Wilson was awful. It sounds harsh, but it's true. He's, he just simply looked stumped by the Patriots' defense. Now, here's a quote from Zach Wilson. He said, I wouldn't say that they do a ton as far as coverage-wise. I feel like we had a good idea and we're seeing the field well. It was just a lack of execution. I can think of multiple plays where I feel like I've got to see something better or get something faster or make even just a better adjustment or a throw um, or the right decision. So uh, basically, in essence, the Patriots didn't do all that much to make Zach Wilson look that horrible, which isn't a good thing for uh, Zach Wilson. So this whole secondary with the Patriots, it's been a, a maturation period. It's been about three years now. That secondary has been super solid. I think they're going to lead the, uh, the league in interceptions this year. So we'll see. Um, as far as the Jets go, their defense bounced back big time from that Carolina loss. Um, I think the defensive line played outstanding. Didn't really let the Patriots get a running game going. We did enough to win the game. There was a couple of key runs, especially that 26-yard run. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, their secondary played great. Now, granted that Josh McDaniels, they didn't really throw the ball deep. So it was a lot of underneath stuff, check down, stuff like that, slants up the seam, uh, no passes over 20 yards. So um, I'm guessing that's why their secondary looks so good. Wasn't like with Sam Darnold the week before when he was throwing multiple times he was throwing deep shots down the field and their corners were getting burnt but uh overall the Jets defense definitely came to play this week and uh you got to get him props Rob Sala he's a defensive uh a former defensive coordinator and uh he did a hell of a job uh 
you know, even though they lost 25 to, what was it, 25 to 6, um, the defense played really good. If it wasn't for Zach Wilson's interceptions, who who knows? The Jets possibly could have won. But, um, yeah, kudos to the uh, Jets defense. Uh, moving along, um, the Patriots, you know what they did? And I, I can appreciate this because when Brady first came into the league, they did the exact same thing, same formula. They allowed him to throw the ball, but it was safe throws, a lot of screens. If you guys remember, the, the Patriots were the, the screen kings. That's all they did. Screens, little slants, little comebacks, little out, out routes, and up the seam. That's all they did. They didn't really start airing it out until Randy Moss came. Uh, they were like the kings of the, the West Coast offense. But um, I, was, I was really interested to see what would happen this week with Mac Jones coming into this week um, because in Miami, the first quarter, they ran the ball 10 times and they threw the ball five times. So if you look at this past week against the Jets, they ran it again 10 times, but they allowed him to throw it 10 times. So five more times, they gave him a chance to throw it. They threw some trick plays in there, so that definitely shows Belichick's trust in him. They're, they're definitely adding to the playbook, and I think that's just going to only expand as uh, time goes by. Um, let's see, Jones was 22 of 30, 73.3% uh, completion percentage for 186 yards. Uh, it was largely an unremarkable performance. Uh, just in part because the Patriots seemed to ask Jones to let the rest of the team do the work, basically. The running game and the defense, two things that everybody knew that the Patriots were going to be good at. And why not lean on them until you have to, you know, just keep practicing every week, getting your reps in. And I'm pretty sure by about week eight, week nine, what do they say? The season doesn't really start till November. I guarantee you, you'll be seeing him taking more shots down the field. Now, as far as the Jets, even though Zach Wilson was horrible, um, they're running backs, man. If it wasn't for him throwing those interceptions, it's like they ran it, they get eight yards, then they would throw it, interception. They would run it 13 yards, then throw it, then an interception. So Zach Wilson, his performance was the definition of a quarterback losing the game for the other team. Now, would they have scored touchdowns if he wasn't throwing those interceptions? I don't know. Nobody knows. But um, if you look at the week before, and Carolina defense is pretty good. Once they got their the offensive line together in that second half, they were able to uh, put some drives together, which ended up in touchdown passes, two of them, actually. So um, I think this is just another case of Bill Belichick being Bill Belichick. He was uh, 20, and I think in his career, he's 20 and 6 against uh rookie quarterbacks and he's nine and one in his last 10 so i think he 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 starts salivating like kojo a little foam in the mouth uh when a rookie quarterback comes in so and there's another good point i want to make uh zach wilson played at byu which i would consider a second tier uh collegiate team maybe even third tier they played the the biggest uh team on their schedule last year was utah and that was it. Whereas Mac Jones plays in the SEC where he's playing NFL talent literally every single game. Uh, people need to keep that in mind. It might take Zach Wilson a little bit more time to mature as a pro at, uh, quarterback. Excuse me. And um, that's why Mac Jones looks so NFL ready because he's – I'm not saying everybody on these SET, SEC teams are NFL talent, but there's a lot of NFL talent in that league. So, um all right, moving on. Let's see here. What do we got? What do we got? Uh, the running game proved a lot more reliable this year for the Patriots. Now, as you can see, uh, the kid that fumbled last week, uh, Rodmar Stevenson, Mond- Ramondre, Ra- I have no idea how to pronounce his name, uh, Stevenson, we'll just say his last name. Um, yeah, he fumbled last week, and we all know when players who are rookies or first-year, second-year players, when they fumble, you won't see them for a few weeks. So he was inactive this last week. He actually contributed, if it was not for that fumble, he contributed a lot to the Patriots against the Dolphins. It's just that uh, that fumble, that's like uh, that's a big no-no up in uh, Patriot land. So he didn't even play this uh, last game. And Damian Harris, man, he was a beast. Even though he didn't have that many yards, he ran hard. And that 26-yard run, I keep mentioning that because you're going to see it out here on the highlights. Um, that 26-yard run was Beastly. Reminded me of Beast Mode. Shall we say Beast Mode Jr.? I don't know. We'll see. Um, And as far as the Jets go, that offensive line definitely came to play. Um, You got to give them props because uh, they didn't look good last week. They had Zach Wilson running for his life. So the offensive line for the New York Jets Jets definitely stepped up. Losing Becton might not be a big problem as everybody thought. 
Um, a lot of people are saying he's out of shape. His feet aren't that quick. So uh, they were able to do the, um, what's that model? Next man up. And, and it, it worked out for him. The offensive line looked a, a lot better. Um, so let's go with all the things that went wrong for both teams. Now, I have to say the Patriots, their offensive line looked horrendous. Durant came in, gave up all three sacks against Mac Jones. 31 snaps, he gave up three sacks. Um, Haran, who was the starter before, was hurt. He got hurt. Actually, no, I'm sorry. He played horrible last week. And this is the right tackle position. He played horrible last week. Durant came in, played decent. He came in this week against the Jets, played horrible. Then they put Haran back in at the end of the game. So the Patriots are definitely going to have to work that uh, that spot out until Trent Brown comes back, which he may be back next week, but more than likely he'll be back against Tampa Bay. I'd rather him be back for Tampa Bay than uh, this next week's game. So that's definitely something that the, uh, the Patriots are going to have to work out. Um, also, Mac Jones the, against the Blitz, he looked like a scared uh, little kid. He looked like, uh, what are they, the deer in headlights? Every time the Jets blitz, and I don't like that. That's that's going to be a problem in the next few months. He has to work on that. It's like when the blitz is coming, he, he just kind of he starts scrambling. You can see his brains racing. And I understand he's a rookie quarterback, and I'm sure he'll get a lot better at that. But uh, that's one thing I saw in Mac Jones' game that I wasn't anticipating. When that blitz comes, he looks like a little child. You know, if, if you were eight years old and you saw all those grown men coming at you, that's how he was looking, and he was ineffective whenever they blitzed. So maybe, you know, Rob Sala is a defensive quote-unquote genius, or, or I'm not going to give him that title. He's a very, very, very good def- defensive coordinator that coached in uh, San Francisco. So he knows what he's doing. So I think he he saw some things he can do to interrupt uh, Mac Jones, and he did it. And I just want to see him improve on that as well. Uh, as far as Zach Wilson goes, he needs to learn – to not try and be Brett Favre, Patrick Mahomes. If the play isn't there, he needs to throw it away. He needs to throw it away. Too many times he was trying to make things happen, and when he was making those things, or when he was trying to make those things happen, he was throwing the ball to... Now, granted, Corey Davis should have caught that ball. That one that went off his fingertips, he should have definitely caught it, but in the same breath, there was three dudes around him. If you didn't throw the pass perfect, what happened is what was going to happen which was an interception. So how about J.C. Jackson? That dude's a beast. I'm really thinking that this is Stephon Gilmore's last year in the Patriots. J.C. Jackson, to me, is the next great elite cornerback that's produced by the Patriots. I don't understand how so many teams uh, passed up on him. But, um, yeah, he's going to be a great, great, great uh, uh, cornerback. And I know one thing. The Patriots better get this run defense together. They gave up 4.9 yards per carry and Jets fans that Carter kid he's gonna be a problem I hope he stays healthy because that dude runs hard he's quick he looks like he's got breakaway speed a lot of promise in that kid if they could just get that offensive line if they could just get everything working right they they have the pieces a lot's on uh, Zach Wilson's shoulders but yeah the Patriots um defensive line the second week in a row people just running right through them now they got all these players to try to fix the uh, problem that they had last year they got uh Devin Gacho I think that's his name Henry Anderson and they got linebackers Matthew Juden and Cal Van Noy who are all run stopping type of linemen and linebackers and for whatever reason now maybe this was the game plan let them run the ball well, what kind of game plan is that, though? Yeah, somebody leave in the comments. I don't understand why Why would somebody... You have all these players that are known to be run stoppers, yet the holes were huge. Now, maybe they were afraid of uh, Wilson running and scrambling and getting yards that way, so they were protecting against that out on the edges. But I just couldn't understand why the middle of the field was wide open when it came to the running lanes. So um, if somebody can explain to me why a team that's supposed to be great at run defense just looked absolutely like the worst run defense in the NFL yesterday. Luckily that he did throw those interceptions because that uh, Carter and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Coleman, they were all just, they were, they were having a field day. 
So like I said, thank God for those uh, those inter- uh, interceptions. So yeah, the Patriots definitely got to get that uh, defensive line shored up as well as the offensive line. Those are the two weaknesses that I see in the Patriots that, that definitely need to be shored up. I think Matt Jones is good. They're giving him a little sample size, a little bit each week. They're relying heavily on their secondary and uh, their linebackers. And as far as the Jets go, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to close out, um, who makes the decisions in the front office with the Jets? Why would you come into a season knowing you're going to get a top quarterback, top elite quarterback, a great talent, come in with a rookie coach, a rookie offensive coordinator, and then you have a rookie quarterback? And none of them have held those positions ever in their life. What sense does that make? I need help with this. Can somebody, were they that recommended? I'm not a Jets fan. I would have an answer if if it was about the Patriots. But were these guys so recommended that they just overlooked the fact that none of these guys have ever done anything like this in the NFL before? You think that would be something that somebody might have said, I don't know if this is a good idea. Seeing that we're dysfunctional already, we're coming off of Adam Gase. Maybe we should get a good veteran coach in here to groom everybody and then find another coach in a couple of years. I, I just, or at least the offensive coordinator, <clears throat> not necessarily the head coach. I just don't understand it. You're not putting the kid in the best p- position to win. Not everything is about getting pieces. So you did go out and get the pieces, but you just totally Swiss cheese your, your, the top of your organization as far as the coaches go. Now, you know, now you got to give them time to get chemistry and I don't know. It's just a, well, what does Michael K say? It's a dumpster fire. That's just what it seems like. But I, I hope the kid does well. Um, it's only going to make the AFC that much more exciting. A lot of good football. I feel bad for Tua. He fractured his ribs. Hopefully he gets back soon. Um, of course, Buffalo's Buffalo. So the AFC East is no longer the laughing stock of the NFL. Tom Brady got out just in time. I wonder if he foresaw that. But anyway, um, as always, this is KJ, and this is Sports Fans Only. Thank you for tuning in to NFL Blitz, and uh, you guys take care. See you later. Peace.